There was once a man, and his name was Roald Amundsen. He was from Norway and was the first man to reach the South Pole. Amundsen was born in Norway, had three brothers, and his father died when he was 14. Amundsen had always dreamed of being an explorer, but his mother wanted him to be a doctor, so he followed his mother's wishes. But then his mother died, so he quit medical school and began exploring. Amundsen began being a crew member on different ships and learnt all his skills there. Then he attempted to be the first man to go to the North Pole. The North Pole is reached, seen the headlines on September 1909. Peary, an American explorer, had beaten Amundsen, but unperturned and determined to save his expedition, he quickly turned his plans to Meanwhile, the South Meanwhile, Britain was buzzing because Robert Falcon Scott had announced he would be the first man to travel to the South Pole. The race was on, Scott versus Amundsen. Amundsen was determined to keep his plan secret. He didn't want all the publicity and chatter. He told only two people, his brother and the captain of the Fram, Amundsen's ship. On the Fram, Amundsen had 97 Greenland dogs, a hut, provisions for two years. The Fram arrived in Madeira on September 6, 1910, a month after leaving Norway. And it was there that Amundsen gathered his crew together and told them the true purpose of the voyage. He also sent a telegram to Scott, informing him of his intentions. Scott received the telegram a month later in Melbourne. Amundsen thought hard about his route. However, everyone still doubted him and believed Scott would get there first. Unlike Scott, Amundsen decided to winter in the Bay of Wales. This allowed the Fram to sail further south putting him 60 miles closer to the South Pole than Scott, who was wintering in McMurdo Sound. The Fram arrived at the Bay of Wales on 14th of January 1911. They set up their base there, Framheim, meaning home of the Fram. Amundsen knew they only had a few months of sun. They used these months of sun to set up food depots along the early part of the route to the South Pole, so that the expedition team wouldn't have to carry so many supplies when they were finally heading to the South Pole. The sun set on 21st of April not to appear again for four months. Amundsen knew that having nine men cramped together could cause problems, so he introduced a strict routine during the dark months. 7.30, wake up. 9 o'clock, work. 12 o'clock, lunch. 2 o'clock, work again. 5.15, finish for the day. Here comes the sun. By August, Four months later, the sun finally reappeared. Amundsen was determined to beat Scott and despite advice from his team that the weather was still too cold, Amundsen attempted the route to the pole in early September. September 12th, about four days after leaving base and furthering to the South Pole, the weather took a turn for the worst. It became minus 56 degrees and Amundsen decided to return to the Framheim. On the return route, many dogs died and members became so cold they were carried on the sledges. When Amundsen returned to base after their false start, he had a falling out with a team member, Johansson, who had questioned the wisdom of leaving while the temperatures were so low. This falling out led to Amundsen finally deciding to split his party, taking only five men with him to the South Pole and leaving the others to explore another part of the Antarctic. The five and key members of the team that actually went to the South Pole were Roald himself, Ola Olofsson, who was a world champion in skiing and a carpenter, Hayam Hansen, who had already worked with Scott in his failed expedition to the North Pole and was an expert dog handler and in charge of navigation, Sue Hassal, who was also an expert dog driver, and Oscar Wisting, who was a member of the Norwegian Navy. The Norwegian explorer waited until mid-October to set out for the South Pole again. This time it was successful. 
The journey was hard and they had to take many unexpected breaks, but they were still six days ahead of schedule. And even though no one believed that his route was the right way to go, his route was actually on flatter land and quicker. Finally, at 3 p.m. on Friday, the 14th of December, Amundsen, Bajaland, Hansen, Hassel and Wisting arrived at the South Pole and they were overjoyed to discover they had beaten Scott. Proudly, they set down the Norwegian flag. They spent three days resting and getting ready for the return route. He returned to Norway a star. So in the end, what type of explorer was Amundsen? Firstly, let's look at Amundsen's achievements. Mainly, he got to the South Pole first. He also brought everyone home safely, which many explorers did not do. Many explorers went away believing they would not return. He also had a great team. Amundsen thought hard about his members and chose an appropriate team for the jobs that needed to be done. But Amundsen also faced many challenges. One was storing the fuel. Unlike Scott, whose fuel evaporated, Amundsen's team found a way of hermetically sealing fuel cans. Keeping all the men healthy and fed was another challenge Amundsen faced. Amundsen and his men ate fresh seal and penguin meat, which boosted their nutrition. This was something they all learned from the indigenous people of Antarctic. Amundsen and his team's winter boots caused a lot of trouble on the expedition. But after laying down the food depots and their false start, they found the problem and soon fixed it. Like anything, some things went right on the expedition and some things went wrong. Overall, the expedition was a success and his main successes were his choice of route, flatter, nearer and all in all, quicker. Amundsen thought clearly about ways to decrease the amount they would have to carry. Food depots meant that supplies could be left along the route, easing the journey. And lastly, the dogs. Unlike Scott, who used ponies to pull the sleighs, Amundsen opted for dogs. Not only were they stronger and would work better at carrying the sleighs, but also when the expedition team were low on food, they would shoot the wheat dogs and eat them. Amundsen had very few failures. This is because he planned things through carefully. But the main failures were the false start and falling out with Johansson. Amundsen demonstrated many qualities a great leader and explorer should show. Amundsen always persisted. He kept going through tough times. Amundsen had very good communication skills. This meant he could build trust with the team. Amundsen was very courageous. Even when he was sometimes scared, he still went out and faced it. Amundsen was very flexible and could work around anything when something went wrong. Sadly, Roald Amundsen died in 1928 while trying to save a fellow teammate on another expedition. I hope you enjoyed this snapshot of Roald Amundsen.